What is up you guys, my name is Selena, and today's gonna be a new tutorial showing you guys how to do this motion blurred mask transition, and we're gonna be doing this in After Effects, so let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so I have two clips right here, and I guess this effect will sort of work on certain types of clips, but definitely if there's like a person in it, this will probably work. So you're gonna want the clip that you want first to be on the top and have it overlap the second clip. But you wanna make sure that the bottom clip where it's overlapping is like still a pretty good part of the clip because that's actually going to be showing in this transition. Now go to the overlap part and it doesn't have to be too long. The part where it overlaps can be pretty short. So as you can see, this is like less than a second long. So I'm going to press command shift D and this is going to cut the clip. And then what we're going to do with the second half of the clip is use the rotor brush tool. So let's go up to the top to the rotor brush tool and you're going to want to make sure your quality is at full so you get like a full quality rotor brush. So go up to the rotor brush tool and double click. And then you're going to just drag all the parts that you want to keep. So I'm just keeping the wall and her and I'm not going to do the ladders because I feel like that kind of looks weird if it's masked out. Okay, so once you have one frame down, you're just going to press command on the right arrow key and then keep going and see if you need to make any adjustments to the rotor brush. Because sometimes After Effects can make it look uh, kind of messed up. So you just want to make sure that it's all cleaned up and nice looking. And I'm also just going to shorten it up because I really don't need this effect to last this long. And then what you're going to want to do is go back to the normal composition and you can see that the edges are pretty, pretty rusty and doesn't look super great. So we can go ahead and feather it and we can also reduce chatter. So this will just soften up the edges and make it look a little bit nicer. You can also shift the edge if you want and go to negative so you can kind of get rid of those white edges. And now what we're going to do is we're going to press P for position on this clip and we're basically just going to keyframe the position so that it gets out of the frame and reveals the next clip. So let's press P and press the keyframe button for position in the beginning of the clip. Then we're going to go to the end and just drag the X axis all the way to the left so that it goes to the left. And you can also go to the right too, but I don't know, it just made sense for it to go left in this one. And you can totally go up or down. You can literally make this in any way possible. You can also scale in if you want, but I'm just going to keep it really simple and just keyframe it to the left. And you can make it go faster if you want by dragging the keyframes closer together, because for me, this is kind of too slow for me. Okay, so now the final step that I love and I think it makes the effect look super cool is to add some motion blur on it. So we can go to the left and go to where it has all of these little symbols and we're going to check the box with the three little circles and if you don't see that you can press the toggle switches slash modes button and you'll probably see these. And then it won't work unless you go up to the top and also press the three circles up here. And then we can finally see our motion blur and it looks pretty sick. Uh, not gonna lie, I'm using this in my next Instagram edit. Follow me on Instagram if you want. And I think my latest Instagram edit is gonna be posted tomorrow. Let's see how much I can get done tonight. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.